What are you looking at? Show's right here. Oh. <laughs> using yours for the uh, mic that you did a demo on? Yes. <laughs> That's what this is. Hey, hey, hey! It's Monday, day, day, night at 8 p.m., which means it's time for another episode of FM Rager. You just caught a little bit of a behind the scenes. It's so hard to come back to the show off of a week. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, anytime we come back after taking a vacation, we're thrown off, <laughs> levels are off, facial hair has changed. It's just not the same. Mm-hmm. Introduce me. Oh. <laughs> I forget how much this show runs on muscle memory these days. <laughs> I'm your host, Connor Clifton, joined as always by my lovely co-host, Ned Gale. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Ned, Fantastic to see you. How the heck are ya? Man, I'm doing I'm doing great. It was an easy Monday. Uh, work was not too hard, and uh, it was good. We just watched a bunch yeah. of episodes of The Wire. Had some Hero Hut folks out there. Ringing endorsement coming at you hot right now. I'm telling you this. That's true. Right now, Halal Guys is over. We should only be messing with Hero Hut. Holy moly, it's, it's so good. good. Is yeah. it Hero Hut or Euro Hut? Euro Hut, probably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's been a week. I uh, That's why I forgot the word. <laughs> it, was, it was absolutely fantastic. That chicken, they have been marinating it and letting it simmer in some sauces. Uh, it was pretty damn good. I'm full as hell. It's great. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to burst. Yeah. Hey, maybe it'll happen on camera. Who knows, you know? So, Ned, I got to ask, how was your freaking weekend? Man, my freaking weekend was a hoot. How were your past two freaking weekends? Two freaking weekends. We oh, yeah, were, yeah, we yeah, were yeah. gone last week. Uh, well, I, I went to uh, the SLC, Park City, Utah, Um Park City next to Salt Lake City. Um, so you go see my cousin get married. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Doug and Jackie. Um, they can finally remove their magic Mormon underwear. <laughs> yes. Have you ever been to Chiba Hut? <laughs> I want to go to Chiba Hut. Doughboys gave it a rave review. What's what's Chiba Hut? Chiba Hut is a sandwich place where all the... Um, it, it, it sounds like a place that I would never step foot inside, but... Uh, this every, doesn't have to do with weed culture, does it? <laughs> it's all weed culture. Oh, boy. It's like their desserts are pot brownies, or Ooh, like... Okay. They've got They've got a, a, the munchie menu or something like that. I'm actually... I'm phoning up the police right now. Let me just call them. <laughs> call them on the phone. <laughs> Our police phone. Uh, but, Ellen Bacher, what do you think about Chiba Hut? I really do want to try it. Is it is there a Chiba Hut in in Houston? Oh yeah, next to um in, my, in like the our neighborhood where children live. No, <laughs> no, it's uh <laughs> it's up near the Target on uh, Taylor. Did you have a Utah Sodi and the SLC? What's a Utah Sodi? No and, caffeine. And the answer is no, <laughs> no caffeine in it. I went today because I could walk there from work. Oh, that's cool. Dang. What'd you get? Yeah, tell you, what, and what was it called? If you got something called like the um, the purple haze and it's got like purple cabbage on it or something. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Instead of a chai tea latte, it's like try weed. You got to. <laughs> I don't know. I could work there. Maybe. Who knows? We can work in marketing. We can work in marketing That's for sure. True. Thank you. Thank you. This is all of our marketing execs. <laughs> Ned, while you were gone for at Salt Lake City, yeah, hey, how was your Memorial I, Day weekend? Uh, it was good. I hung out with Cody. Friend nice. of the show, we watched Obi Wan, and then we watched uh, the Celtics uh, take on the Heat and their playoff game. Uh, it was a nail biter. And, well, it was one of those. And well, it was, I haven't seen the results yet. <laughs> it was one of those situations where I was talking shit all night, and then the last two minutes I got real quiet, uh, <laughs> and in the last ten seconds I was dead quiet. But in those last four. When Pat Bev shot for the three, no, he could have shot for a three, and instead he tried to make a slam dunk. No, I'm getting this wrong. He could have made a slam dunk. He was wide open. He instead he went for the three. He missed, and then it was just a Celtics game from there on out. And you can hear more about that on the eventual. Is that a foul? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Clearly I not. Asked the... When you guys discuss the the game <laughs> a year later, <laughs> <laughs> it's next to the silos, next to Holler Brewery. I got the KGB. It's roast beef and horseradish. Damn, that sounds great. <laughs> I liked it, but there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, the small size. It's called a nug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious why is roast beef and horseradish the kgb and what is the cia 
Yeah. What oh, part? Yeah. Okay. What, what part the- of drug culture is it getting into? Is it just like <laughs> the the pig, the corner? What are some other terms from the wire we've been watching? Oh yeah, uh, snot boogie. Uh, the wi- wiring, <laughs> tapping. Uh, all right. What else? Oh, that's not the one I wanted. A what? That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Anyways, my uh, my recent weekend, pretty good too. Yeah, yeah. La- uh, last Friday night, we went down to Cody's and uh, right. got Dim Franchise Boys back together. <laughs> That's right. We watched uh, Mission Impossible Fallout. Getting ready for is that Mich- the eighth one? Is that MI eight? I don't know. How many Mission Impossibles are there? There was one more than I thought there was. I think that was MI seven. I could be wrong. Oh man, no, MI seven's coming out uh, next year. Oh really? Well, there's I, Mission I guess Impossible. Less than I thought. The, the next two movies are going to be Mission Impossible: Reckoning Part One and Part Two. <laughs> um, it's Mission Impossible One, Two, Three. Then there's Ghost Protocol, Rogue Nation, Cody Protes, Fallout. I think that's six. Yeah, yeah, six yeah installments. You're right. Six, right. Yeah, yeah. So seven and eight will be Part One and Part Two of uh, Mission Impossible: Reckoning. Um, we're he, very excited. We have to buy the six movie collection. I know we just watched all these movies, but look at that. That's so many films Ned, on the one. What if I told you we only needed to wait two years to be able to buy all eight Mission Impossible movies featuring Ethan Hunt? Whoa. It's played by Tom Cruise. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we watched Mission got some, Impossible. Got we got some out here. swimming in. What else? Yeah, yeah, we did some swimming. It was great. Um, Saturday, we didn't do shit. We cleaned the house. We cleaned the house. We were very bored. Uh, it was a slow Saturday. We went to an estate sale. We went to where we thought a garage sale was going to be. Uh, there was no garage who, sale. Who does a garage sale on a Friday just during the day? We're, we're out Saturday prowling. College Estate kids. Estate sale, leaving it. It was looking all for a garage sale. It was all college kids looking to get out of the house that mommy and daddy are paying for. Ugh. Which, Ugh. honestly, nah, given, great. <laughs> given the things that we saw at the estate sale, aka things that potheads buy ironically to keep in their house, like you know, ceramic, uh, ceramic pigs, and, yeah, 100 so lots, ceramic pigs. Lots I of saw ceramic pigs. so many fucking pigs. It was great. I didn't buy any of them because it was cash only. Yeah, I was that really was, bummed. They had a big flat pig that I really wanted. That was, they should have had the grandkids running that estate sale instead of uh, their very old kids. Instead of the estate. No, uh. The person who died was 97 years old when they passed, leaving me not knowing what to say. <laughs> I thought my condolences or good on them. I didn't know. But their, the woman's kids, probably in their 60s or 70s, Seemed just fine with it. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to say congrats, but I didn't know how well that would be taken. Congrats on all the shit you guys got. Hey. Um, yeah, yeah, congrats but on the new ironing board. A garage sale in our neighborhood, we probably would have been able to find some more useful things. Oh, well. Yeah. Let us know if you know of any garage sales coming up this weekend. Saturday mm-hmm. morning, I will be out on the prowl. We also worked on Neo Benchy. Oh, yes. That's coming up this week. We'll yeah, get we'll, more. We'll save uh, the plugs for the end. Yeah, we'll get that to that in the, in the plug section. And then uh, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. I played Hughes and Clues with my girlfriend and friend of the show, Maria. Ooh. That was fun. What What is Hughes and Clues? Can you explain it? All right. It's this game where, <laughs> Without like, the attitude. It's this game where the board is, like, this huge spectrum of colors with different... Uh, it's like a grid. And you draw a card that will have four different colors on it with their corresponding grid coordinates, so like B12 or whatever. Okay. And then you uh, have to give one word clue to get the other players to guess what the color you picked is. And then they put a piece down. And then you give a two-word clue and see where they put a piece down. So you can clarify, mystify, whatever the fuck you want to do. And um, I wasn't good at it. I played (laughs) with two people who are artists in art education, and one of them... Is like a color theorist, so um, I was really struggling. I think my opening clue several times was turtles, <laughs> and my two word clues one were means teenage mutant greed. This yeah. one means greed. It's like you, you said that for orange. The you hardest said that for blue. The hardest ones were the purples. That was the that was the biggest section because it was just like dark blue, indigo, purple, light purple, and you're like, man, I don't know. There's only so many purple things. Yo, what y'all sipping on? This is a, a little it, concoction that we created. Very nice champagne. No, it's it's uh, it's whiskey and uh, soda water. <laughs> Jim Beam and Topo. Name the brands. We'll get some money. 
Call it a topo beam. Or Jim, Jim Chico. Chico. <laughs> All right. What else? What did we... You did some stuff oh, yesterday. I did a little bit of swimming on Sunday as well. I got I got my first massage ever uh, yesterday. Candace gifted me one for my birthday last year, and I waited up until the week of my birthday to use that <laughs> massage. Oh, is it about to expire? Yeah, yeah. And once... You, <laughs> we got to get you, the discount get a, hands. Uh, yeah, if you get an expired massage, they do it with like little <laughs> golf cleats, kind of stepping on your back. <laughs> They get a guy with missing fingers to do it. Yeah. It was great. She said I had the most tension in my ankles, which that was unexpected. I thought it was going to be a uh, wrist. My, my, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. She said I was a fighter. Uh, I thought I was relaxed, but apparently I was uh, very tight and resistant the whole <laughs> massage. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Looking forward to more in the future. I'll say that. Where'd you, you go? You... Uh, Z- Zala. Zala. Uh, uh, some place. I went to some place in Chinatown. Nice, twenty bucks. See, that's and the they do way all to kinds do of shit. Yeah, not not not. God damn it! Not like that. Um, they uh, what the fuck? It's a time aside, so they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> they're getting in your toes. They're getting in your your fingers. They're just like getting all the tension out of your whole body. You feel like a a, a jello mold that you rubbed a bunch of lotion on at the end of it. You feel great. A what? A jello mold that you rubbed a bunch of lotion on. It was right next to Tan Tan. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, I know that one. Foot reflexology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's still 20 bucks. From what I understand, they got in some trouble. But uh, <laughs> if they're still there, I highly recommend checking them out. Well, very cool. Another ringing endorsement from the F and Rager um, internet show. Yeah, get Euro Hut and a massage. <laughs> um... <laughs> That's what about all I got? I mean, that's 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 two weekends worth of content, brah. I watched Fire Island this weekend. The oh, Joel Kim Booster movie with Bo and Yang and Matt Rogers. Uh, it was fantastic. Margaret nice. Cho's in it. She's really, really good. Um, and those are all the actors I can name from that movie. Uh, yeah, it was fun. It's on Hulu. Nice. Now just nine ninety nine a month. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I watched Severance uh, exclusively on Apple TV. That's uh, crazy. Start, started a trial for that one. Uh, only have two more days to finish that show. Speaking of ex- really, oh, a trial. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of exclusivity, Ned, did you know that we can get our Mission Impossible: Reckoning Part One tickets on the Regal Unlimited app? Wow! And by purchasing that ticket, we get points towards our account. Yes. Maybe I don't know. Actually. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh. I'm getting free popcorn all Yikes. the time with movies. Oh, wait, that's not. <laughs> I think, I don't know how it works, but I think I can just like grab tickets and my points just go up. So when I show up eventually, I'm like, free popcorn. <laughs> wait, I you- should get a job next to the theater. And so in between shifts, I just go in and act like I'm going to see a movie. Oh, oh, oh and you're, you're, using a free, you're using a free movie. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you were just buying tickets. <laughs> No, no, like, no, 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 no. Dropping 12 bucks I, a, a, every week I spend, just to get some nice popcorn later. I, I spend just twenty three ninety nine a month. <laughs> hey, it's the price of movie tickets these days. Uh, I'm, I'm making my money's worth. So I, uh, I say, give me a ticket, and I get a free ticket, and then I get some points. And I'm thinking, like, time to scam the big movie companies, yeah. the big theaters, and get as much free uh, popcorn and soda I want. Suck it, regal class. <laughs> All right, should we go ahead and get our guest in? Yeah, yeah we're clearly 15? out of steam over here, so let's get, let's get <laughs> some, somebody else in the show. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sticking around during the break. Uh, Ned and I are very, very excited for this guest. We've been pitching the idea to each other for a while, and then we finally decided, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, he's an old friend of ours, an old co-worker of ours. Please give a warm welcome to actor, director, John Swayze. <laughs> hey, John. How's it going? Going good, fellas. How y'all doing? I'm uh, doing all right. Doing just well. We finally got those drinks that we were talking about. Yeah. Whiskey and uh, club soda, basically. What do you got? Uh, I'm drinking a, uh, a JMO and Diet, affectionately known in the industry as a JMO and Diet. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're doing a, a topo, uh, topo Beam. Or wait, what was it? It was a, a Jim Chico. Jim Chico. Yeah, Jim Beam and Toto. Oh, yeah, that's, that sounds good. Yeah. I put, you know, to- Chico, it's funny. Tipo Chico has caught such a craze. Yeah. Um, 
you know, in this country, which I find very funny because we were always taught growing up, never drink the water from Mexico. <laughs> but it's like crazy, you know, and it's real crazy with like uh, uh, the ranch water cocktail. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Know? And uh, it's it's so funny because like my we went we had my daughter just graduated from college and we uh, threw a party for her. And um, we my wife says, hey, go get, you know, this liquor, this wine, this beer. Oh, and pick up some Topo Chico's. So I went to Costco and I'm, you know, going through the aisle. And, and, you know, when you're at Costco, it's just like if you see what you're looking for, even if it's not necessarily the brand or whatever, it's like, screw it. I'm going to get it. Yes. That's, yeah. that's the list, you know. So I saw Topo Chico and I grabbed it took it home and I thought, oh man, I'm so proud of myself. I did that. And I get it home and it's not Topo Chico. It's all the Topo Chico flavored seltzer. Oh, <laughs> the alcoholic shit. It's like, oh, damn it. <laughs> so, and we, we tried to give that away as like door prizes at the party and people were like, that's okay. Thanks. I'm good. <laughs> hey, they're not that bad. <laughs> Some of them taste I, like I dog shit. Daughter, she moved into a new apartment, and I think, I think that's what the young kids drink is that kind of flavored garbage. So yeah, you know, e- even if not, she doesn't drink, a, she doesn't drink a real drink like diet coke. And whiskey. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's that's a good uh, a seltzer water is a good thing to hide in people's like houses or offices. You know, it's something they don't want to find. Mm. I'm sure you could scatter those topos, maybe around Sentai. I don't know. <laughs> oh. I should probably just take them to Sentai and just put them out on the counter and see what they'd see if people take them. You should uh, take all the wine bottles out of that fridge. Their time in there is done and put Topos in there instead. Yeah, they're not getting any newer. <laughs> Never know. All right, John. Uh, so let's get into the meat of this interview. This is a party show. We like to ask our guests about parties. I want to ask, can you remember the first party that you uh, ever attended? The very first party I ever attended, um, I'm assuming we're not talking birthday parties when I was five. You could. It could be. If you remember, if you got a story for well, it. Because I was so drunk. I, was, <laughs> uh, I know that one of the very first parties I think I ever attended that was like where I felt um, more adultish, you know, like I'm, my parents didn't take me to a party. I went to the party mm-hmm. was, uh, in high school. Um, you know, I'm, I'm old enough that when I was in high school, uh, you know, kids were, the drinking age was 18. So kids were drinking at 15, 16, 17. Okay. And, um, I went to a party, uh, with a friend of mine who lived across the street from me and he went to a school here in Houston called HSPVA, mm-hmm. which is the high school visual and performing arts. Or performing in visual arts, excuse me. Anyway, a lot of artsy people. So very progressive, very advanced, very, you know, out there, very mature, um, all these kinds of things. And that's where I met, in all honesty, where I met my first gay, like, kid my age. Mm -hmm. Because I went to a very uptight, private, white school. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that just... I'm sure there were gay kids there that used, they were so deep in the closet. It was ridiculous. But um, anyway, so it was just really wild. And, you know, people were smoking pot and drinking and, you know, it was just, it just seemed so adult. And I was just like, God, man, we, we would never have a party like this in our school. I mean, we would have parties and somebody might, might sneak in some Boone's farm or, you know, something. Yeah. Really Mostly crap. you're just pay, playing jacks, man. <laughs> Staying out of trouble. Yeah. People were like walking around with cocktails and it was so, so European, you know, it was so sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was really cool. It was a lot of fun. So I would probably be the first time I ever, and I, I remember this is really weird, but I remember there was a guy uh, there who had a pair of pants on that had, and they're, they're, they were like blue jeans, but they just had a zipper in the front and a zipper in the back. There was no button or anything like that. It was just two, two zippers. Like, well, that's handy, I guess. <laughs> I, I like that that insinuates that you just kind of jump out of your pants every time. Like you zip both down yeah. and kind of launch out. 
Right. Those I mean, are they, action they probably pants. Had some sort of apparatus where he could just roll out of bed and slide right in. And, you know, when he stood up, they were on hooks and it just zipped him right up and he was out the door. <laughs> Those are Jetson so, pants. Yeah, That's yeah. what he has. Yeah. Some yeah. sort of dressing Jetson. machine. Man. Now, did you ever uh, host or throw a party back then? I did. When I was, um, when I was a senior in high school, um, I threw a graduation party for my class and, um, had, a had a friend of mine that is a barbecue guru and he, he did all the cooking and, and we had, you know, keg of beer. And I wanted, I told my parents, I wanted to have a spiked watermelon. <laughs> and at first they were like all on board. And then as we, as we got really close to the party, they were starting going, you know, maybe we don't get the spiked watermelon. You know, I think the keg of beer is going to be fine. <laughs> but mom. I, like, yeah. I know. I want the watermelon. <laughs> it's, it's fruit. It's good for you. <laughs> so sure enough, man, you know, I had, there was one kid and he was a junior that, uh, and you know, they were, everyone, everyone was drinking beer. You know, it was, you know, my parents were there and, you know, it was a different time back then, but it was, uh, you know, none of the parents seemed to care. But there was one kid, man, who was just passed the F out. I mean, in the backyard, just in a chair like this. Just... <laughs> and my my dad comes up and he's like, John, do you know that young man? <laughs> like, yeah, that's that's Arthur. You know, he's like, well, I think he's had too much to drink. I'm like. <laughs> You think? <laughs> anyway, yeah. So it was it was a good party though, man. It rated pretty high on the old. Uh, you know, I got I got major props for that. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. That's great. Are you still throwing parties to this day? Do you do you throw parties every now and then at your house? Yeah, you fancy yourself an MC? Do throw party. My wife and I love to throw parties. She's um, she's very good at it. We've thrown lots of parties though. Uh, we just had two parties. Uh, here, one for my daughter who graduated college uh, a couple weeks ago, and one for my son who graduated high school a week ago. Nice. And uh, they were they were cool. My wife really is she's really on it with the parties. I mean, she one of the things that I love about it is she likes to do very themed parties. Ooh. So uh, for the graduation thing, it was uh, since she graduated from um, from. Uh, college um and she's going in she's an actor going into theater we had themed cocktails so you had beer and wine but we served a ranch water we served a, some sort of uh prosecco thing you know and and gave made up names for them and had a list and a bartender oh, and, give us some names it, here we need to hear these these cocktail names I, I, you know, I can't remember them now, <laughs> but it was funny because like we had ranch water and we're like, well, what do we call this one? And I was like, well, you know, it's already got a name, <laughs> but you didn't uh, bust out anyway, the Topo was, Chico's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Has it was fun. One time we used to have before we live in Sugarland right now, but before we moved to Sugarland, we lived in uh, an area of town uh, called Westbury. And we lived there for 20 years and we had a, it was a small house, but we had a really, really outrageously cool backyard oh. with a, a nice patio and a, a cabana deck with a full kitchen, a refrigerator. I mean, it was a nice, you know, seating area. It was really, really cool. And um, one time when we were, you know, we didn't let lack of money stop us from throwing a party. So we just, we just came up with creative ways to do it like, Hey everybody, we're gonna throw a party, and uh, we'll have a little beer and wine, and we're gonna have a big barbecue pit. So bring your meat and your beverage. <laughs> and so we just had this big smoker with full of coals, and people just came and threw their chicken on, or threw their steaks on, or whatever. You threw know, a and, six pack and of it, Miller on there. <laughs> yeah, we just had coolers everywhere, and people just started dumping beer and wine and, and you know by the time everybody left you know we had like food left over and lots of beer and wine and like, we came out ahead yeah you know, yeah it was weird we, we this whiskey that we were drinking tonight was one that we were like do you know where this came from I was like 
I don't know. I think someone brought that over, and we just became the richer. We've we've hosted three parties in this house since we've lived here. We consistently make cocktails every week, and I don't think we've ever had to buy a bottle of booze. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's crazy how that works. That's that's the way to do it. I think I get that from my grandparents. Um, my grandfather was a lawyer down in South Texas in a town called Harlingen, and uh, he was you know he was successful, but he had ups and downs and whatnot. And my mom used to tell me that, you know, back when your granddad and your grandmother were, you know, times were tough. They had they had enough money to either get a bottle of gin or get the dry cleaning. So they would get the bottle of gin because then they would forget about the dry cleaning and not even care. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, cheers to that. Cheers Just to that. Indeed. Mm. Now, I, I also want to ask about the convention circuit. So you are an active participant in the convention circuit. You're going to conventions. I know that you've invested in conventions as well. And I just want to ask, first off, I do want to ask for any anime fans in the uh, the chat right now or in the audience, if they have any questions, feel free to put them forward. But I did want to ask you, what is one thing about conventions that you wish convention goers knew as someone who's on the other side of them? Well, um, first of all, uh, you know, conventions this is going to be kind of a long winded answer. So buckle up here. All right. That's fine. We got 30 minutes left. <laughs> when I started working as a, as an anime voice actor back in 97, um, you know, there was conventions, there might be one or two around the country somewhere a month. Hmm. Now there's six and seven a week around the world and they range in size from you know, a thousand people for a one day show in Bowling Green, Kentucky, 25 people at a Megacon down in Orlando, Florida. That's a four day event, you know, and everything in between. But one of the things that um, I uh, love about conventions um, aside from the obvious financial thing, yeah, um, is that I'm a, I mean, you guys know that I'm a big deadhead. I love the Grateful Dead and uh, jam bands and stuff. And, and one of the things I love about it, aside from the music and the, the drug, not the drugs, I didn't say drugs. Can you the whole thing, out? yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the the mushroom. Oh, there I go again. Uh, <laughs> the the is the the feeling when you're at a sh when when you're at a show. Yeah. Everybody's there for one reason, and that's to have a good time. It's not more than it's more than one reason. It's to have a good time, support each other, love each other, build each other up, all this kind of stuff. And that's the same vibe you get at an anime convention. Um, even a pop culture convention, but especially at an animated convention, an anime convention. And I think the reason is, is because it's a place where everybody can just kind of let their free flag fly, man, and not worry about it. No one's there to hassle anyone. No one's there to hang up on somebody or bust somebody up. I mean, it's just, it's all about love and support and, and yeah. you know, respect and, and that kind of thing. And I just think it's beautiful. You know, you could walk around and, and see somebody dressed as uh, Naruto or uh, somebody from Haikyuu or Star Wars or the MCU. And, you know, it's all this mixture together. And then you could see somebody walking around in nothing but shaving cream. And you'd be like, man, that's really cool cosplay. <laughs> Until like an hour. But it's... it's see him in handcuffs later. You know, I, just, I just love... I just I just love that vibe about the conventions. So, uh, you know, conventions obviously shut down uh, a couple years ago. There was uh, 19 or excuse me, in 2020, there were only well, I went to four conventions in the entire year. And, and um, one of them was mine that I put on called Anime Dallas. But the next year in 2021, they started to really pick back up. And then this year, I mean, it's back to, it's it's beyond business as usual. It's it's going gangbusters. So Dang. this year, out of fifty-two 
weekends, I am doing 44 events. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've never, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Never, I don't know what's going on with that, man. It's crazy. So this past weekend, I was up in South Dakota at uh, Black Hills Con. Had an absolute blast. Went to go see Mount Rushmore. Got to pick yeah. Abe Lincoln's nose. You know, it was, <laughs> it, was really, it was really cool. But I'm starting a 20-week, 19-show run oh, starting this crap. past weekend. Wow. I know. So... But it's but you know, like I said, I mean, you know, truth be told, it's 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 a uh, it, it's great to meet fans. It's great to meet you know folks and all that kind of stuff. But it also you know there's a lucrative side to it. It's a, there's a there's definitely a money component. You oh, know, for sure. we're out there yeah. trying. So, but one the other thing too that I think is really cool is you know, um, a lot of actors in the anime uh, space you know, we're very humble and very, you know, for a long time, we've been sort of the black sheep of, of the acting world, you know, and, uh, but so when somebody comes up to you and they're just, like, oh man, I love your work. Oh God, your voice changed my life. I just, oh my God. And then you do a voice and they just go, oh my God, oh my God. And they freak out. And your, your natural tendency is to want to go, Hey man, look, it's, it's no big deal. It's come on. I'm just a guy. I'm just a dude. You yeah. know, no, don't worry about it. Relax. But I learned a long time ago, um, and I will I will stick by this. Um, to them, it is a big deal. So don't rob them of their joy of this moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't have to. It's not being pompous and like, look at me. Yes, I'm a voice actor. <laughs> it's, you know, it's it's a big deal to me voice actors for people let them have that moment you know let them have that that joy and that that euphoric experience yeah so that's another reason i just i i love that's what i love about going to these conventions because it you know people go people the thing about conventions is everybody wants to be with their own tribe mm -hmm. and that's where they do it is at conventions you know and if they can meet people that they look up to and respect and uh, have touched their lives in some way, um, then it's it's just a really cool thing. I really dig it. It's fun. Damn, we we need to do some conventions. You know, of, of all those f heads out there who love f and rager. I mean, we've both done uh, <laughs> we've both done things. I believe we have both had panels at Comic Palooza. That's very true. Um, you and Cody did a podcast there that no one paid attention to. But it was uh, incredible. Not true. Many people were forced to pay attention to yeah. as Cody and I yelled at people walking by. That's true. Uh, I guess if you're well, rolling your eyes at someone, you're paying attention to them. <laughs> and, hey, listen, guys, I'm going to extend this invitation to you. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I don't know if it fits into your time schedule. If you ever, if you ever do like pre-recorded or or shift it to another day. But August the 12th, 13th, and 14th, we're going to be doing Anime Houston, which is a convention I put on. I would love it if you came and did a live show oh. at uh, Anime Houston. John, we, we are, are so, so there. there. Yeah. I cannot tell you how how much we would yeah. love to do that. <laughs> well, Ned, you've that also done be... a convention event with uh, Andrew Love, I yeah, believe. Yeah, Andrew Love and I uh, re uh, did one of our, our funny dubs there. Uh, here, wait one second. I'm, I'm helping you get the flyer advertising right now. You can say... Ned Gale, uh, voice of trending at 10,337. Oh, wait, you played station security and why the hell are you here? Teacher? <laughs> That's right. That was you. <laughs> People will be so excited to see all of my exciting roles. <laughs> oh, man. Many, many, which John, you cast me in. I don't know if you know which ones <laughs> in, in what? <laughs> in any of these shows. Yeah. I, th I think a couple of these might be your, your titles. John, you are the master at what are you doing? Can you get in the booth? <laughs> yeah. Like, so great. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm looking up through my phone, so I can't. It's oh, that's pretty tiny. Very see. tiny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to say, up front, yes, I probably cast you in some of them. <laughs> Trust me, all the roles of my uh, behind the voice actor are like screaming guy A, <laughs> like guy who gets blowed up. 
<laughs> so I did want to ask about the uh, while we're in the realm of conventions. Have you gone to any really fun convention parties, or have you gone to parties that's like voice actors only or anime industry people only, anything like that? Um. Well, yes, I think so. Uh, I'm, I, I, I was a real good boy in Rapid City uh, this past weekend on Friday night and then apparently blew it out Saturday night. <laughs> I, I, uh, it was crazy. I mean, you know, these conventions, you know, a lot of times you're not getting to bed till three or four in the morning. It's just, it's just party, 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 party. See, you I've know. never been part of the convention party thing. I always hear there's like people are like hotel raves and stuff at the convention party. I've only done the daytime thing. I've, I haven't uh, experienced the yeah, true I, creature. No, I'm not like I, I'm not uh, I'm not a big rager rave rave guy dance party. You yeah, know, I'd yeah. rather sit in a room with a bunch of folks and shoot the shit. And, yeah, you know, just stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, and if you come to Houston, you will. You will see that um, uh, for sure firsthand because we we will go late into the morning, but um, it's uh, or early into the morning I should say, but it's uh, yeah. There's some. There's just been some wild. You know, I, I I've done some. I mean, just you know, you whip out fifty bucks and people do anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can get away from the convention yeah. party story. <laughs> yeah. I'm not into bestiality, but 50 bucks is 50 bucks. But... <laughs> mm. Okay, I did want to uh, rewind the clock a little bit here. Now, I know, based on the story you've told around the office, you moved up to New York for a little bit. Is that true? Did I get that right? LA. 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 My bad. Because uh, didn't you live with moon unit zappa <laughs> or did you live with janine garofalo i forget which one you I, lived I, with. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah i wish i lived with moon unit um, <laughs> no I, I lived in la for a brief period in the early 90s and my roommate was janine garofalo and um okay that's just this, this cool. is yeah <laughs> this is this is before uh she had made it big. I knew her. She used to, she started out doing stand up. Well, she's from Boston, but she came down to Houston. I think her dad lived here or her mom or something like that. So she came down here in the late eighties um, and was working at the comedy workshop where I was doing sketch comedy, which is now gone, but it was a very famous uh, improv and sketch comedy place and, and stand up club um, down in Montrose. And, um, I got to know her there and, you know, we became, we weren't great friends. We were friends, you know, but, uh, she moved to LA and, you know, at some point a year later I was moving out to LA and she was looking for a roommate and she's like, yeah, come on down. I live in West Hollywood. You got, I got a room, you know, it's 1200 bucks a, a month and it's yours. And I was like, great. So I did. Yeah. And, uh, but it's funny. One night I came home, I was at a bar. We lived just off of Melrose. And I was at a bar one night just having a drink and it was about seven o'clock and I'm like, well, I've had enough. And I'm walking home and I walk in the front door and Janine goes, Hey John, this is my friend moon. I was like, Hey moon, I'm John. Nice to meet you. And I went back to my room and I was just thinking, well, that's a weird name. <laughs> oh, fuck me. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, it was really cool, man. I mean, she was hanging out with Andy Dick and Bob Odenkirk and Ben Stiller and uh, Colin Quinn and, uh, you know, just a bunch of cool, cool people that were, had not had their moment yet, you know. And uh, I ended up moving back at the, in December um, for, uh, to, to just, you know, I, I ran out of money. I, um, was like, man, I gotta, I gotta do something. This is no good. So I moved back to Texas with my tail between my legs and, you know, um, and then of course a month later, uh, Ben Stiller comes out with the Ben Stiller show. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not, I certainly am not trying to imply that I would have been on it. 
but I, I do think I may have gotten a chance to at least audition for it. So um, I kind of feel like I, I missed an opportunity there, but you know, I've had a, if that would have happened, I would have never gotten into the anime game probably. So it, uh, it all worked out. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Absolutely. Now I, uh, let's rewind. The, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I also made friends with a good a guy out there. Uh, we were, we were working at the groundlings or studying at the groundlings together, uh, which is a, your fans don't know that's like second city improv but it's on the west coast and uh my uh i was became friends with this guy named mike henry uh who became the voice of cleveland uh, <laughs> on family and again you know i it was years later when that happened but i just kind of went wow gee I, too bad i didn't stick out stick with that for a little longer you know what i mean it's yeah. like it would have but, uh, you know, you don't know this shit. But. You could have replaced Mike Henry when they recast him on the Cleveland show. <laughs> <laughs> if you had just stayed there long That'd enough. Great. That would have been perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, while, while I'm rewinding the clock, I do want to ask, uh, re- re- rewinding a little bit, I do want to ask, so what drew you to acting? Yeah. It's like a bug that bites you. And so I want to know, when did it bite you? Yeah, so that's a great question. I mean, it, uh, so uh, for the longest time, uh, I wanted to be a marine biologist and study sharks. I'm fascinated with sharks. I love sharks. My number one bucket list item is to go into a cage in Australia and dive with a great white. Wow. That, that is number one. If I could do that, oh my God, it would be, I'd be, that's it. I'm done. Um, but so when I was about 15 or 16 years old, uh, my parents took me, you know, we took a family trip up to the Northeast and first stop was New York. We were there for about six days and, uh, we stayed and my mom went to Smith, which is up in uh, Massachusetts. So, uh, she went down to New York a lot and some of her friends from Smith lived in New York. And one of them was an old college friend that said, Hey, if you're coming to New York, we've got an apartment right in the city. Uh, and we're not going to be there. You know, we're off at our country home or whatever. So why don't y'all just stay at our apartment? So we had a free place to stay in New York week. And, uh, my parents were, they love New York and they, um, they love theater and they, got some tickets to go see a, a little musical called Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Ooh. And we went uh, to go see it. We had orchestra seats. I mean, we're right down in the fucking middle of the action. It's the not the original, original cast from the 70s, but the reboot original cast. Um and it featured, oh, and her name escapes me, but the show is, Joseph is not really the hero of the show. It, the, the star of the show is the narrator, and it's a woman. And um, this woman that played, I can't remember her name. She was, I just, I was, I fell in love. I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm 15 and I want to marry you. And you know, I'm, you're just so great. But it was such an amazing show. And it was the last if not the last night, it was the last week of the show before it closed. But the energy was off the chart. And I was just like, I mean, they were coming into the audience and dancing in the audience, singing. And I mean, it's, I was just shaking. Um, I bought the album, you know, back when, you know, you buy the, the CD. I bought the final album for the, <laughs> the soundtrack. And, uh, we ended up going to Sardi's restaurant after that. And uh, Ira Levin, who wrote Death Trap, was there with some of the cast members. And I mean, it was just fucking magical. It was, and I was just, I was like, I was literally just. <laughs> and all I could think of is this is what I want to do with my life. This is it. Forget sharks, forget marine biology this is what i want to do and the whole rest of the trip uh my parents you know we'd go to somebody's house and we you know the kids would tag along and 
they'd be like, uh, well, listen, if y'all want to watch TV, there's TV and stuff in there. We're going to have, you know, adult hour and which was code for, they're going to go get liquored up. And, uh, but I know I was 16 because, uh, one of the time we went to go visit some, uh, cousins of my mom's in Greenwich village. And they took me out to, uh, a bar. The, their kids took me out to a bar <laughs> and, um, uh, I had my first Guinness. Oh, man. <laughs> and then I also uh, smoked some hash on the sidewalk <laughs> with some people. And by the time it was time to take me home in the cab, I was just throwing up everywhere. And the, <laughs> the, cab, the cab driver's like, he's not getting in my cab. <laughs> and I was like, I'll be okay. And they're like, you... So, we drove home through Central Park, and I was like a dog. We had the window down. I was yeah. just hanging out the window. Been there. So uh, <laughs> that's that's what made me want to become an actor. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming at the city of New York as you're puking, like, I'm going to be big someday. <laughs> yeah. And so what's really great is, so that was, that was the plan. And so... Uh, you know, I came home, I got involved in the theater thing at school and uh, kind of found that I had an affinity for it. I mean, I, you know, Hell I'm yeah. not, I wasn't, I mean, I needed a lot of training, but it was like, this feels right and natural, you know, went off to college, got a majored in theater, came back to Houston uh, with the eventual goal of moving to New York. Um, I worked at the comedy workshop, like I said, for a while and started doing movies and TV and commercials and moved to LA, then came back and uh, did Dazed and Confused and Eight Seconds and Ray and you know a bunch of commercials and national beer commercials and shit like that. And I was like, you know, screw it, man. I'm making a living here Hell in yeah. Houston. Why would I go somewhere where the cost of living is like five times the amount here. And then um, in 97, did some anime. Somebody goes, you ought to do anime. And I'm like, what's anime? And they're like, well, it's Japanese animation. I'm like, well, I don't speak Japanese. So how could I do that? And they're like, no, dumbass. You dub it into English. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I mean, then I started doing that. And, you know, I didn't know what anime was. I was like, why, why does everybody have blue hair? I don't understand, <laughs> you know. But, um, but then it started to grow, and then I started directing, and then the ADV grew, and Funimation grew, and I mean, you know, it just kind of blew up into what it is today. But it was really funny because um, after all of that, uh, I was 15 when I went to New York. I didn't go back until I was 50. <laughs> Wow. Damn. I never, I never made it back except I went back on my 50th birthday. We took a trip to, you know, some friends, my wife and another couple and, uh, you know, had a blast, you know, it was great, but it was like, yeah, this is weird, man. I, this is just, which is to me, it's kind of a testament of, you know, the best laid plans, you know, you just, you never know how your career is going to, where it's going to take you, how it's going to take you, what it's going to do to you, you know, no kidding. And um, here I am now at 57, and my whole life is nothing but anime. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you saying that, like, you never know where your career is going to take you. It To this day, it absolutely blows me away how, when I, I never watched Neon Genesis TV Evangelion until as an adult, maybe last year. But I was in an anime club, I was anime adjacent, and... That show changed the lives of some of my absolute closest friends. Without it, mm. I probably wouldn't have those friends. And my life would have taken on a whole new trajectory. I never would have run into Ned. I never would have gotten a job at Sentai through Ned. And then I meet you. And it's this crazy thing. I was just like, I met a person who radically changed my life in this crazy butterfly effect way. Um, right. Yeah. Right. Dude, and that's... That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, that, you know, um, I, you know, I met a kid one time, I was at a convention in Chicago at a convention called Anime Central. And it's a pretty big convention. It's, you know, 20,000 people. And 
this lady that was, she didn't run it, but she was in charge of guest relations or something. Uh, but she goes, hey, I, I need you to meet my son. And I said, okay. And she goes, just so you know, I need to give you a little backstory. He goes by Gendo. I was like, oh, <laughs> you mean he cosplays Gendo? It's like, no, he's changed his name to Gendo and he dresses as Gendo every day. And so I meet him and he's got the beard and the glasses and the haircut and the suit, everything looks like Gendo. And he goes, uh, hi, I'm Gendo. And I said, how you doing? I'm John. And I'm, you know, at first I'm really kind of like, okay, dude, I don't know what, this is weird, but whatever. That's, that's fine for you. But then he starts to tell me that he goes, so I need you to know this, that, um, uh, uh, several years ago, I was in a very, very dark place and tried to take my own life. And while I was in the hospital, um, somebody brought in this show called Evangelion and said, you got to watch this. I mean, not like it'll cure you or anything like that. It's just like, hey, man, why don't you just watch it? Maybe it'll cheer you up, you know? And he watched it and he goes, and I, I watched the character. I heard your performance. I, I just, I, and I identified with it. And that's what, he goes, that's why I'm here today. That's why I'm, I was so in love with that character. And I just said, that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be Gendo and I will go on living and I will live as Gendo. And I just thought, I mean, you know, what do you say to that? Like, all right, good for you. You know, <laughs> you know it's like, you're just like, so your jaws on the ground, you're, trying not to cry and your the humility is just overwhelming, you know, but it's, that's, that's the kind of effect. It's amazing. That's the kind of effect this shit has on these people, you know? Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's, it's very, very touching. And I'm, you know, it's an honor to be, to be a part of something like that. So. Absolutely. Anyway, so I didn't mean to bring it down. No, no that's, that's a, that's a great thing. Like I've talked to a lot of different voice actors who do the, uh, the convention circuit and they all kind of have the same effect of like, they didn't really realize how impactful it was until they see it. And then it's like, Oh, this shit means something. It's great. Right. Right. I I'll tell you something else. Um, this is a, I don't know if we, do we have time for a, a little story here? Yeah, we can do yeah. one more. Okay, so um, uh, one of the things that I like to do at conventions is uh, I call it con horror stories. And it's not conventions that are bad. Mm. It's just weird shit that's happened to me at conventions or that I've experienced or whatever. Yeah. And at the convention at ASIN, I was telling this story, um, but um, uh, Monica Rial when I did my very first convention at, uh, in MetroCon in Tampa, Florida, uh, Monica Rial was there and she was kind of showing me the ropes and there were about seven or eight voice actors at the convention. And we were waiting on Monica. She was supposed to come meet us to do a panel, an all actor panel. And, uh, we're all waiting on her and she comes in a little late, about 10, 15 minutes late. And she's walking through the crowd and the room is packed. I mean, 500 people. And, the, and, and she's walking through just like, and we're like, Monica, what's wrong? And she grabs the mic and she goes, I just got to say something to you all. And I want you to hear me very clearly and make sure you understand. I was just coming to this panel. And as you know, at conventions, the elevators in the hotels can get crazy busy. And sometimes you have to wait a long time. And even when you do wait, the door opens, the elevator's packed with people in cosplay. And there's no way to get on. So I decided to take the stairs from like the seventh floor. And as I'm coming down the stairs in a frantic rush to get here, I come around about the third, maybe second floor. And I smell something very foul and rancid. And I finally come around the bend and there on the, the landing is a human pile of shit. <laughs> of course, we're like, what? <laughs> and she goes, now I'm not saying it's anyone in here that did that. <laughs> 
But if you're going to poop in the stairwell at your convention, I'm not coming back. So, okay. So I, I tell that story to this lady at the convention and she goes, well, I got one better than that. Oh God. I thought you were going to say she did it. <laughs> yeah. So she goes, I was at a convention one time and people were riding up and down the escalator and eventually somebody just pulled their pants down and took a big shit on the oh, escalator. Oh, come on. And it, and the bread and everything, they had to shut it all down, to, you know. So, anyway, <laughs> years, years, years later, years later, I was doing a show down in the valley, down in Harlingen, or actually in Padre Island, and I met this guy named uh, Tony, Tony Akamura. And Tony Akamura was clearly Hispanic, so I thought it was interesting that his last name was Akamura. Yeah. And he said, well... I'm actually, uh, for a number of reasons, I changed my name, and I'm trying to become a U.S. citizen. I'm from Mexico, and I'm trying to become a U.S. citizen and, and start a new life, and I wanted to change my name. You know, had some problems with my father and, or whatever it was, you know, just wanted to distance himself. I said, oh, well, that's cool, man. He goes, but I said, listen, man, why don't you stay in touch with me on Facebook and, you know, let me know how stuff goes. And uh, he goes, yeah, that'd be great. So about a year, year and a half later, I'm at a show up in Seattle, Washington called SakuraCon. Really big show, about 25,000 people. And uh, I'm doing autographs. And it's I've got a line of people down the thing and, you know, uh, some other actor sitting next to me. He's got a line of people. You know, there's like four actors in a line and, and we've all got lines of people. And it's very, it was the line stuff was very regulated. Anyway, I look up. And I see this guy kind of walking on the outside of the barrier, like looking like he's going to cut the line. And I'm just thinking like, dude, don't, don't do that. They're going to throw you out of here, man. Be cool, man. Get in line like everybody else, you know? And I'm just signing stuff and I'm trying to keep an eye on him. And he gets about 20 feet away from me and he stops and he goes, John. And I look up and he goes, it's me, Tony Akamura. And he holds up a little thing and he goes, I'm a U.S. citizen. Hell and he holds yeah. up the certificate of citizenship. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. And so I, I tell everybody in the crowd the story and everyone's applauding and crap, clapping and, and having a great thing and all this. And I said, Tony, listen, let me finish my, uh, my, my, my autographs and I'll, let me go buy you a drink. So I finished my autographs. And I take him to the bar to buy a drink and we leave the hall and go up the escalator. And sure enough, if he doesn't pull his pants down and take a shit. <laughs> Sorry. That was a long way to go back joke. <laughs> Welcome to America, Tony. <laughs> That's great. That's that. Those two stories are how I begin and end my con horror story panel with about 40 <laughs> minutes of other in between. It's great. It's Perfect. perfection. It's, uh, yeah, no, yeah. you got it down to a science. <laughs> John, we're at the 901, so we're going to have to move to our last segment here. So stand by. We're going to have to. Uh... Yeah, speaking of getting it down to a science, we got a song for you. So let's, right, uh, let's, let's kick it. into it. I love that. I want a new plug. Tell us what's going on. Tell us all the stuff you're doing after we sing this song. John, <laughs> please don't tell uh, Joey that we made that song. But also, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you have to plug, man? What do you got coming up that you'd like our audience to know? Uh, cool. Um well, number one is, uh, I, you know, like I said, I put on uh, an anime show, uh, two anime shows, uh, Anime Houston, which is August the 12th through the 14th at the uh, downtown Hyatt Regency in Houston, Texas. Uh, we've got an amazing array of guests. We've got uh, Dante Bosco and Johnny Young Bosch and yes. uh, a bunch of other folks, a lot of Houston actors. Um, that'll be a lot of fun. And then uh, in Dallas, that'll be Thanksgiving weekend. We're going to have Eric Vale and a couple of Avatar actors, and, and uh, I'm very excited about that. Um, uh, I don't know if you ever had it. I don't have an example of it, 
but I'm um, getting ready. We're going to make some uh, Uncle Shucker's crackers, which Hell is yeah. cracker snacks. I'm going to make those, and uh, we'll send you some for your show. And uh, All right. Um, also, also, hang on. Sit tight. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm not okay. going anywhere far. Okay. I'm coming. Hey, almost there. There <laughs> So, uh, you both might... Uh, <laughs> I'm a voice actor. Uh, both may know this, but I wrote this book here called uh, Zeke Gets Glasses. It's a children's book. And uh, it's... The, the official title is The Jungle Bird Children's Reading Community. And uh, the first book is called Zeke Gets Glasses. And uh, it's a beautiful book. It was illustrated by Blake Shepard, oh, cool. who is a uh, voice. Um, and um, uh, it was written by me and another guy named Mike Vance uh, that I've been doing comedy with and, and projects with for, for a gazillion years. And uh, it's the first in a series of books. But basically, uh, it deals with things that uh, kids um, might find to be a monumentously ridiculous thing to get over. Uh, this one is about needing to get eyeglasses for a kid. Um, the next book is about a squirrel who's afraid of heights. And <laughs> it's uh, stuff that it's, it's, um, it's not about, hey, man up, you know, but it's, a, it's like, it's okay to be afraid of heights. Mm -hmm. But you do have to figure out a way to work around it and, and live your life and, you know, that kind of thing. Don't let it cripple you, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, but very, very excited uh, too. I, my ultimate goal, and this is for me the end game, is to get it animated. So um, I, I'm working with some folks and trying to get some, you know, funding together and, and uh, uh, see if I can't get a pilot done and see where it takes us. Um, I, you know, we've we've got, uh, uh, as you all know, um, uh, Sentai was just bought by AMC Networks. So, uh, they're they're a content provider. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping maybe they want some content in the form of children's programming. I, I bet they but do. We'll, yeah. We'll see. yeah, there's yeah. a lot of that. A lot of things that need to happen, of course, but that would be cool. But anyway, those are those are the, that's something that's really near and dear to me. Yeah. I I funded the thing. Uh, I'll show it again real quick. But I funded the whole thing myself. I you know we got a little investor uh, uh, help, but it's pretty much been a labor of love for me. So I'm just something I'm very proud of. It's a really beautiful book. And um, I've got 800 of them right now, if anybody wants to buy a truckload. So, uh, <laughs> well, that's great. Jim. And I'll autograph, I'll autograph each and every one of them. So, um, yeah. but yeah. anyway, so yeah, other than that, uh, I got the conventions and um, yeah, man, just uh, living the dream and, and loving life and uh, trying to lose 80 pounds. <laughs> I'm happy to hear it, John. Ned, what do you have to plug? Uh, swimwear department will be headlining uh, Heights Theater. Damn, I should have pulled this poster up beforehand. Uh, <laughs> I forgot what day it's on. Oh, man. Here, why don't you go ahead, Connor? All right. Uh, Neo Benchy at this Thursday. Ned and I have got a uh, uh, fun thing that we're planning. Let's see if I can name all the people who are performing. We've got friends of the show, Cody and Jared, uh, Connor and Ned. That's us. Devin and her boyfriend, friend of show Maria, Alex Oriani and Daniel Cohen. Research. Yes. Keep uh, it coming. Um, Chris Kelton. Oh, my God. There's one more. Someone's. Did you already say the name of the show? Neo Benchy. Oh, okay. There we go. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't remember the last one. I'm so, so sorry. Um, we'll make a big. Oh, Grant and Tim. There you go. All eight. Uh, I was going to say, um, if you want to find out, come to the show. Come to the show. Yeah. Also, this Friday, uh, Emily Hines and I, she's the host of uh, Emily Takes Notes, the Houston City Council podcast I produce. She and I are going to be doing a special live stream this Friday on this channel to discuss the Houston city budget that just got approved. Uh, so we'll be going through that and trying to make sense of it for everybody who decides to tune in. Ned, back to you. Hell yeah. And me over here, I now know the date of the show. It's Friday, July 8th. Calliope, uh, uh, Calliope. Calliope Music. Jesus Christ. Calliope Musicals and Blossom Aloe. I could not talk tonight. Guys, it's a headlining show at Heights Theater. 
swimwear department should not be doing this. We're too silly of a band for that. So please come out. We're going to do something very big with the stage show. Uh, and Calliope Musicals is nuts live. They have a member of the band who only does lighting, if that gives you an idea of how uh, cool the show it is. Oh, so, very cool. Come out to that. And oh, yeah. I, I just want to say, just to give you um, an idea, this is what I have on tap. If you're in the tri-state area. Yes, yes. Uh, I just did Black Hills Con. So next weekend, I'll be Anime Blues in Memphis, Tennessee. Anime Arkansas, Bentonville, Arkansas. Anime Festival Orlando, Orlando, Florida. Anime Midwest Chicago, Greater Austin Comic Con, Austin, Connecticon in Hartford, Connecticut. Tokyo Con, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Anime Zing, Davenport, Iowa. Anime Houston, Houston, Texas. Soda City Comic Con, Columbia, South Carolina. Ultra Plus in West Palm Beach, the home of Jeffrey Epstein. NDK Con. <laughs> Doing an anime store in Oklahoma City, Ancient City Comic Con, St. Augustine, Florida, Missouri Con, St. Louis, Missouri, Bonsai Con, South Padre Island, Anime Tattoo Con in Allen, Texas, uh, another hodgepodge tastic in San Antonio, Texas. Then I've got uh, two weeks off, three weeks off, it looks like. Hey. Then uh, an anime store in Houston, Charleston Con in Charleston, South Carolina, Anime Dallas in Dallas, Texas. Anime Pensacola, Pensacola, Florida, Yamacon in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and then Con Off Delete in Rosemont, Illinois, and That's then it'll name. be Christmas. <laughs> All right. Well, make sure you put in uh, yeah. your PTO request soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's an issue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, do you have anything you'd like to say to our listeners before we uh, sign off here tonight? Uh, guys, just thank you so much for all your continued support, love, and, and uh, good vibes. It's, uh, you know, I love doing stuff like this. Ned, Connor, I love you guys. Ah, love you too, John. And I'm so thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for asking me. Um, next time, I'll, I'll try to drink a little more beforehand. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, now this is y'all y'all are awesome i'm so happy for your show and and this is just great man thank you congrats so to you guys no, i appreciate that we, we gotta we gotta grab a pint soon yes absolutely hit up the uh the old production boys let's set something up hey, we still we hit the brewery about on thursdays thursdays so. i'm there well not, Thurs- not this thursday not every thir- <laughs> thursdays yeah we used to do Fridays, but I can't go Fridays. I'm always off at a convention. So okay. Kyle, Kyle graciously moved it to Thursday. Oh, what, what a what a sweet person! Yeah. He's a real mensch. <laughs> Indeed. All right, well, all right, that, fellas. That's our show. We'll see everyone next week. Thanks a lot, John. Bye. Thanks.